Hi everybody, my name is Daryl Charette. I'm a professor of civil engineering at Cambrian College in Sudbury, Ontario. I'm glad you're with me today. I'd like for you to come with me and have some fun while we explain the open channel flow apparatus that I've got set up for you and how it relates to real civil engineering engine uh, applications. So what we've got here is called a hydraulic bench and it's used in a variety of labs that we do here at Cambrian College. Uh, for instance, we've got the Venturi meter sitting on top, but that's not what I'm using today. Uh, and essentially what this is, is, um, is a pump that's going to recirculate water, for, like I said, for different labs. And what's built into this, which is nice, is a digital flow meter, which measures your flow in either cubic meters per second uh, or liters per second. So what you see here, we classify as uniform steady flow. That is, the channel is prismatic, or it has a constant flow area. As well, the slope of the bottom of the channel is consistent. So what you end up with is the top surface of the water is parallel to the bottom of the flow channel. Again, we call this uniform steady flow. So with this open channel flow apparatus, we're trying to recreate real life open channel. So that might be a sewer, or that might be a culvert, and you rarely end up with this perfect uniform steady flow that you see in front of you. Maybe you've got an obstruction or a change in flow area or the flow path, which results in what we call varied flow. So what I'd like for, to demonstrate to you is what happens for uniform steady flow when we introduce a blockage. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce an obstruction into our open channel to simulate, let's say, a blockage in a culvert or a sewer. And that's effectively going to reduce the flow area, uh, therefore increasing the velocity. And what you should expect to see in a moment is the surface of the water is going to drop down significantly. Uh, and we call this supercritical flow. At some point downstream, what's going to happen is something called the hydraulic jump. So over here, we'll have the hydraulic drop. Later on down here, we're going to have the hydraulic jump where the water returns to its normal subcritical state similar to what you see right now with this uh, uniform steady flow. So this is an example of varied flow again with an obstruction. So let's see what happens. So the flow area is effectively reduced. We're trying to differentiate between uniform steady flow and varied flow. And we would call the flow through this section here super critical. We've got what's characterized as the hydraulic drop, followed by supercritical flow, and then something we call the hydraulic jump. By reducing the flow area, what has to happen is the velocity of flow increases. This is similar to putting your thumb over the end of a garden hose, which I'm sure you've done when you can't find your nozzle. recreate this phenomenon yourself at home actually if you head over to your sink turn your faucet on uh, I would say a medium steady flow and observe what happens when that stream of water hits the bottom of your sink what you should see is a ring and you should clearly be able to see that hydraulic jump where the accelerated water actually is able to slow back down and go to a more uniform state it's important for us to be able to predict whether the flow will be super critical or even turbulent. If this were a natural open channel, we'd have issues with erosion. So we might have to put in place some erosion protection, such as riprap or rock protection, to again, protect our natural stream. I hope you enjoyed my demonstration of the open channel flow apparatus. Please head to cambriancollege.ca for more information on the civil engineering technician and technology program. And I hope to see you soon.